five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, how are you? This is the uh, Ramble, and uh, I don't know, I think I'm a little out of sync tonight. I don't know. Maybe I am, maybe I'm not. I can't tell. Once it gets out there, it's a whole different story. But anyway, uh, it doesn't matter because we're going to go over and uh, uh, talk to somebody that we love to talk to once every couple of weeks, and here she is. Gentlemen, you're looking at the lovely and attractive Ronnie Bennett as we both sit here getting old together. Uh, <laughs> older and older every time. Y- yeah. Now, you have, a, uh, you have an alter ego, uh, the crabby yes. old, crab, what is it? Tell them. Crabby your, old lady. Crabby old lady, which is on your, on your blog, which is timegoesby.net. Whenever I really want to bitch about something, I write in the third person as crabby old lady. It kind of keeps me from getting too nasty. Yeah. Now, you said maybe you're crabby old lady today. Oh, yeah. Not enough sleep last night. (laughs) I'm tired and I'm crabby. (laughs) Now, you don't like to stereotype old people, but isn't that kind of stereotyping old people because they always think that old people are crabby? I'm just talking about me. No, but I'm saying that you always, you make a big deal out of the fact that you don't like to stereotype old people, and yet by being crabby well, old lady, you crusade. It's part of my crusade. You see, it would be okay to make jokes about the get-off-the-lawn old man oh. or crabby old lady if we were treated as equals with people of all ages. We are not. Hmm. So I try to find a balance between that ideal that I yeah. would want. Right. We are equal with every other age group in the, in the world. Yeah, well, but dream I'm on. With, you know, the normal human thing is sometimes you're really crabby and I'm crabby today and I don't like the question. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, as I, I think I said to you once before, as time has gone on, I began to suddenly realize why old people are crabbier. And why they do yell, get off my lawn. Because I found myself in those get off my lawn moments sometimes, <laughs> you know. Like, you know, there are people down on the street at uh, 3 o'clock in the morning yelling and screaming at each other. And I want to, like, pour water on them, you know. Yeah, I would do. Yeah, I yeah. might even do now, it. Now, Nick would I have done that when I was younger? <laughs> I said, you can't lift the bucket anymore, right? You know, if I was younger, I'd probably street yelling <laughs> is what would happen you see if it's if people are accepted for what they are mm-hmm. it's it, I, I think every kind of group it doesn't matter I mean there are hundreds of kinds of group thousands uh, they all have their idiosyncrasies yeah. if we were all accepted as equals and we're talking mostly about age here but it mm-hmm. can apply to anything yeah. where people are not treated equally um, but if we were then you could make really funny jokes. And one of the things I wish somebody, because I'm not that kind of humor writer, I can't do it, but I think one of the funniest things is all of us forget names. You know, if I were introducing you to someone in person, I would very likely at the last minute, but at the point where I'm supposed to give your, a, your name, mm-hmm. look at you, the guy I've known since I was 17 or something, and your name would go right out of my head. Now, a man, and it happens to us in conversation all the time. Well, somebody, a good comedy writer, could do a wonderful sketch about two old people trying to have a conversation, and neither of them can remember any of their nouns. If, we, if it weren't a put-down to talk about old people's memories, mm-hmm. then we could have wonderful comedy sketches like that. Yeah, yeah. What's, how come your eyes are running? Oh, because I, it's a pollen. It's a pollen. It's, it's allergies. I, I, and if I take the allergy medicine, I'd be like sleeping like this. So, you know, I mean. <laughs> That's it, how I feel today. <laughs> there's, no, there's no winning, you know, with allergies. Uh, uh, you know, I, um, um, but I find myself, I, I find myself getting crabby. I do. I mean, and 
I think part of it is, as you get older, now you, you have a legitimate medical condition, okay, that you can be anything you want to be, and I will put up with it, okay? <laughs> oh, probably not. <laughs> you know, got cancer like you do. But anyway. Uh, I don't think, outside of what you cannot physically do, yeah. what, depending on what is wrong with you, I don't think you should get a pass just because cancer is attached to my name and not someone else's. I don't think I should get a pass for that. Okay, I, I probably agree with you on that, although I may have uh, a prostate cancer, the good kind, the slow kind. But if I get it, I'm thinking of using that as an excuse for not wanting to take out the garbage. I'm sorry, dear. <laughs> you can take that up with Marjorie. I'm yeah. sorry, dear. I the, don't want to get in on that. <laughs> uh, the, the cancer's acting up today. You know, I mean, something like that, you know, as an excuse. But um, so you don't feel that people you don't want people to go out of their way to be extra sensitive towards you in certain ways because you have cancer. Well, there's things now that I have this breathing problem mm -hmm. that will be addressed in the next month. I can't even get to the garbage or the or the mailbox without having to stop a couple of times and rest. I just don't have enough breath for that really? anymore. Sometimes, not every time, but sometimes, even pushing like when I'm just getting started, the empty basket at the market is hard for me to do and I'm breathing heavily. And the other day I was coming home, I used to be able to carry in six bags of groceries, no big deal, and run up to the front door. I haven't been able to do that in a month or two. And I was coming in from the grocery, I now just have to make many trips back and forth. Uh, and I was walking toward my apartment and a neighbor came by and took some of my bags and helped me in. That was terrific. I really appreciated that. But I don't want any special treatment beyond the really lovely help with things I actually cannot do anymore. I've got some in the kitchen up above the cupboards, some flore long fluorescent lights mm -hmm. throughout. Yeah. And I bought some new ones at the hardware store. And then I thought, you know, I think whenever was the last time I was on a ladder is the, probably should be the last time I ever do that. So nobody's happened to have been here, but the next person who walks in my house... Is going to put in the fluorescent <laughs> lights. Yeah, yeah. You know what? That's one thing I've found as I've gotten older, and this is strange. I have a hard time with ladders. I yeah, mean, because our balance isn't as good as it used to be. Yeah. Uh, uh, like, for instance, in the old days, I could have jumped up on a table. Okay? Yeah, I don't exactly. think I can jump up on a table anymore. I mean, it's not that I'm you know, uh, as uh, having certain restrictions like you do now with your health, but it's just because as you get older, the idea of being up on that table kind of makes me unsettled because of the balance thing. Right, you and know. you don't know. I mean, there have been times just walking down the hall, I suddenly kind of half fell into <laughs> So, and by the way, I bought a walking stick because when I, when they fix my breathing, hopefully, and I can walk again at some some length mm -hmm. i don't need a cane which is mostly for taking weight off your feet yeah i need a third a third leg to help me balance you know yeah so um I, i'll start using that um but i have a calendar a wall calendar just behind this monitor up above me on the wall that when i have to turn the page for the next month yeah i can't reach the top little place where you you know put the previous month mm-hmm and so I've always just kind of knelt on the desk and done that. Yeah. And I've done it the last two months, but I'm a little shaky about it. On the other hand, if you wait till somebody walks in and you remember, if you yeah. to ask them to turn the <laughs> calendar, well, by then it's the next month after that. So, you know. But you're, on the other hand, you're not going to call somebody <laughs> up and say, would you please come over? I need you to change the month on my calendar. You know, that. You know, that's asking a bit much. That's like me saying, hey, I don't want to take out the garbage. I've got cancer. You know, so, I mean, yeah, whatever. So, you know, it's it's a balance, I think, to find a way. I wrote about it yesterday. Yeah. To graciously accept help when it's offered, to be able to ask for the calendar or the fluorescent lights or mm -hmm. whatever when you need it, but not ever, ever to use cancer or whatever it is that's a matter with you as um, a means to flail people with. Yeah. 
Um, so anyway, I want to uh, I want to do something a little bit here, uh, show and tell uh, for our audience. Okay. Yeah, uh, and I sent the picture to you originally, so yes. you know what the, what's in the picture because you're not going to be able to see and it. I actually own the picture, but in black and white, not color. Well, no, you don't own the black and white version of that. You own a black and white version of me and John and Yoko. That's the only no, black. I have that exact picture that really? you me in black and white. Really? Because I've never had this picture. Let me put it up here so that people can see what I'm talking about. There we go. There's, uh, there's a picture. Now, first of all, those two exceedingly young people in the, <laughs> <laughs> in the bottom of that picture is Ronnie in red and me with the mustache and a full head of hair, you might notice. Okay. You might want to mention the year we're talking about. What year was this exactly? Do you remember? It, it was, uh, uh, let's see. What year did we move to New York? We moved to New York in 69, I think. But how could that be? Because I thought that we were at Woodstock. I know we were at Woodstock. What, wait a minute. When was it? was 68, wasn't it? Or was it 69? No, I think it was later. Yeah, I think it was later. Uh, okay. But it was April that we moved to New York from Chicago. Okay, but I think it was 69, if I remember correctly. I just couldn't remember. I don't know. Yeah, I think it was 69. So okay, this so would have... This was at WPLJ. Which we so went... We two years at WMCA, so it has to be 19... Maybe 72. Seven, no, because you and I broke up in 71. Okay, this is, a, you know, <laughs> this, is, this is one of the problems with getting older. You know, is is this uh, this uh, this uh, constant um, trying to figure out dates? Uh, okay. You know, I could be wrong about that. Maybe we broke up in '72 when I was 31, rather than breaking up in '71. I don't know. Let's I say that it makes the dates work here. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the picture. Uh, I, I think it was I think it was like 71 72 I it probably seven it we did it we did John and Yoko on the morning show which I first yeah. did when we went to PLJ okay so is that a PLJ or WMCA what this picture yeah no no this picture is WPLJ because the people in the background is the general manager whose name I can't remember and I've written to the other guy in the picture, the guy with almost like the beetle-like haircut, who's Alan Shaw, who right, was the uh, head of uh, head of the FM stations at ABC. And I don't know who the tall kid is back there. He was one of the either tech, I think he was one of the tech people. I mean, it, nobody that I remember, okay? It's like, how did this guy get into my room with all these other people, you know? The well, guy, I remember him. I just don't remember his name or what he did. The guy in, in the mid, the guy in the middle on a level with us is Pete Bennett, who was Alan Klein's second in command uh, after Alan, and Alan Klein was the manager of the Beatles, and so he squired John and Yoko around, and you know. Maybe you Godfather. should say why that picture was taken. Because why was it taken? Do you know? It was a, because we had we. Had, I'd been, I'd, it took a long time, but finally booked John and Yoko on the show. Mm -hmm. And it was whenever somebody of that stature came on the show, mm -hmm. somebody at the station always wanted to photograph, so we would do that. Oh, okay. So uh, this was after we had done the live interview uh, with them that day. And that was in a conference room, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it wasn't taken in a studio. And uh, then, uh, of course, as I say, down at the bottom of the picture on the left-hand side in red is, that's Ronnie. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's, that's way before she had to wear a turban. Uh, <laughs> By the way, I'm going, I'm going to try growing my hair. Are you? It happens. I don't know if any, you know, I already had bald spots before I lost it to chemo. Yeah. But it's growing now, so... You know, I'll keep wearing hats of different kinds until it's long enough to see what it looks like. It's right now. It looks like somebody needs, uh, you know, a, a haircut. Guys who wear their hair, you know. It just every. It's kind of patchy. What? It's kind of patchy, or is it coming back in? I don't know yet. I can't tell because no. it hasn't grown in that much. And so I'm going to let it grow though and see how patchy it is. Good word. I like that. And. Um, 
and we'll see. You know, maybe I'll let it grow. No, the, tur- the turban looks good, though. You look like a grand dame in New York society. <laughs> okay, I'll take that. Yeah. Fun. Anyway, getting back to the picture, uh, let's see here. And then, of course, that's me with a mustache and, and lots of hair, which I don't uh, have anymore. Uh, and I don't know where I left it, but it, uh, somewhere back then. You know, the thing is, is that you're a good deal older than your dad when he died, but he had a beautiful head of hair as an old man. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. But he was receding. So uh, yes, you but had that a, doesn't make, yeah. you still had lots and lots of Where hair. I got the baldness from was for my per, my maternal grandfather, who was born cue man. ball. Okay. That, well, that's who you get it from. You don't get it from your father. You don't get it from you. I don't your, think anybody knows that for sure, Alex. Well, no, you, no. They they say that uh, genetically baldness is inherited from the maternal grandfather. Yeah. As long as you want to believe that. Well, I mean, I, I can't explain this, okay? Well, you can't explain. I mean, genetics is a very. If I had my father's science. hair, I would still probably have quite a bit up here. So you know. But I mean, I don't think you can make blanket statements about where they come from so much. I asked a strange question once, and you're gonna you're gonna blanch at this. Who do you inherit okay. your? Are you asking me this who, well, question? Uh, who, do, who do you inherit your penis from? <laughs> I, I, I have no idea. Anyway, uh, just a little question. Back to the picture. It's it's the. You always go there. How do you do I, that? I've managed to do it because I think lower than sometimes Donald Trump even thinks. So you know. <laughs> But back, and then the two on the right hand side, I don't recognize. Who are those two people? Let's see here. I think his I name was John and her name was Yoko. Oh, 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 that's who you're talking about. Yes, yes. I'm talking about those two. Yes. Uh, and uh, this, I never had this picture in black and white. I have a black and white well, picture. I'll track it down and send it to you. I have a picture of me with John and Yoko. And uh, we're all sitting at a table together. And that's the, that's the one that I have had up until now. And then my ex-producer uh, met up with some people at PLJ, and they sent him letters, and they sent this. And I have never seen this photograph before. So. Oh, well, I, I've got two or three from that session. I'll track them down and send them oh, off Oh, good. You. Then I can collect the whole set. You know. Yes. <laughs> if it weren't for people like Albert sending me this and other people sending me other stuff, I mean, there are people sending me audio from WPLJ that they used to record at home while they, and collect the shows. I've seen it online, recordings from the old shows. Yeah, yeah. So, um, um, in fact, I had to stop one the other day. Somebody was uh, had, had actually put up the John and Yoko interview, which I protect. I really I go after anybody does who wants to use it. I don't mind them using it if they ask. But if they don't ask, then I mind them using it. Yeah. Who owns the copyright? Nobody owns the copyright, but I could sue for the use of my likeness of my voice. Okay. Uh, the, I don't uh, think that's true about the copyright. I think somebody owns it. No. Uh, you know, and if 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 there was one, they could see if no one else. Well, if uh, they could claim it, and you can you can claim copyright, but it was only for maybe thirteen years, and then the copyright would have run out, and nobody renewed it. Why is it, it so short? Books go for seventy-five or eighty. Because years. times have changed. Back then, it was like I think it was thirteen years, and then renewable for another thirteen, and then it went into what was called public domain. Okay, but in any event, I what happened? I'll tell you what happened with the with the interview with John and Yoko a few years back, not few, many now. A major um, uh, auction house in London was auctioning off a reel of John and Yoko's interview, uh, and they were saying it was going to get three hundred thousand dollars because it was a rare, never before heard interview and I went and checked what the interview was and it was the one I did with John and Yoko so I have a copy of it I've always had a copy of it anytime I've gone to another station I've upped the uh, when it was on reel to reel so then I upped it to like a, a, a CD and then I upped it to a, to an audio file you know I've, I've kept it in pretty pristine condition 
And I got a hold of the auction house in London. And I said, to begin with, the tape you've got is a seven inch reel. Right now I'm looking at a 10 and a half inch reel, you know, the bigger reels. I said, Those, that's the master, that's a copy that was probably given to John and Yoko, that we would make a copy and send it to people. Uh, and I said, uh, you don't have any rights over it, and the one you're selling is not the master. And then I said, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this interview, and I'm going to put it up on the Internet in a form that everybody can download it. I said, so I think you ought to stop at the auction. Two days later, there's a news item. Uh, auction house decides to withdraw John and Yoko tapes. And I, what I did is I took the... I took the, the money factor out of it. You can go online and I have posted the John and Yoko interview. You know, you can listen to it anytime you want to. Uh, and I've done it because I didn't want anybody to ever be able to make money off of it. So I've devalued it. So. Was it a good interview? I don't remember. Oh, it was a terrific interview. Don't you remember? In the middle of it, he threw up. Oh. <laughs> That's not what makes it wonderful. Well, what happened was in the that. middle in the middle of the interview, we're sitting there, right? And a guy walks he was in. Going through something, some rough time with his ex-wife. No, or no, or this was this was um, this had to do with yeah, this had to do with the Beatles, uh, Eastman suing Klein, suing John, it's suing the other Beatles. Everybody looking at this, I like. Yeah. But, well, anyway, the point was this guy walks in, and. I said, who are you? And he said, oh, John Lennon? He said, yeah. He says, oh, I'm a big fan. You're terrific. By the way, you've been served. And he served him right there in the studio while we were on the air. That's one of the things. I, that, said, I think that the <laughs> Yeah. And uh, John then said, I have to go to the bathroom. I have to throw up. And he left the room to go throw up. He actually was so nauseated by this event. Wonderful conversation, Alan. Well, I mean, it's a little bit of Beatle history that people might like to know. You know, but okay. anyway, so <laughs> don't you remember that? Yes. Oh, okay. I never thought right. to tell the story, though. I mean, I don't know. Well, I very seldom tell the story, so there are some people now who have heard the story about how John Lennon almost threw up, threw up in my studio. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's better than the time that Morris the Cat scratched me. Did they bring him to the studio? Did yes, he speak? they brought him to the studio, and they put him on the on the co the console. Wait a minute, I get confused about the famous cats. Morris is what? What did Morris he was the finicky do? cat? I don't like blah 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 blah. Oh, oh, oh okay. uh -huh. What kind of food did he promote? Uh, I can't remember which brand. Friskies, maybe something like that. Anyway, uh, uh -huh. uh, I do remember this about Morris the cat that I I made the cover of New York Magazine in their yearly. Uh, salary issue and it posted my salary and right below me was Morris the cat and his salary yeah. luckily I made a little bit more than Morris the cat but you know <laughs> yeah, but anyway more I so Morris the cats in my studio in San Francisco and and I pet him right just like I because I love kitties right I know how to pet kitties and he scratches me yeah well mine always turned out he let me pet him for a minute and a half and then bit my hand. Yeah, well, in any event, the people who were his handlers were now worried I was going to sue. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> but as it, what, what it was, I went around uh, for like a week with this scratch on my hand showing it to people. Oh, my God. I said, see that? Morris the cat. And I used to refer to him as that horrible, terrible cat, you know. But then he okay. died because well, he only had... half a century ago, Alex. Huh? That well, was about half a century ago. Was that ago. a half... Well, that was San Francisco. So was that half a century? Yeah, it was... A, no, I don't a know. A quarter of a century. A quarter of I a century. I don't know when you were in San Francisco. Yeah. So anyway, so that, that was my big deal with Morris the Cat. Wow. You know. So anyway, so looking one last time at this picture, we... Uh, I look at it and I just go, wow, has time passed? You know, look at those two kids trying to do a radio show, you know? <laughs> sort of like doing a ham radio thing in our bedroom or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's put on a show. Hey, I think I can get John and Yoko. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everybody's always impressed. I'll tell you when they, sh they had a, a PLJ 
goodbye party because the station's been sold, okay? Uh, and uh, they don't know whether they're going to do away with the call letters PLJ or what a WPLJ. But uh, I went to it. I stayed for about five minutes because it was so noisy I couldn't stand it. Old person. See what right? happens when See? you get old? Yeah. <laughs> but the only picture they showed of me on this screen was uh, of me with John and Yoko, that black and white that I have. Mm -hmm. And my uh, old producer, Albert, noticed I wasn't there, so he sent me. He said, See, they did a tribute to you. And I wrote back, They would have never shown that picture if I was only in it and John and Yoko weren't. <laughs> you know? You know, it's just astonishing how you can always find something wrong in anything. That's right. That's my job. <laughs> It's my job in life for crying out loud. Do you know what? 25 minutes have just flown by. There you go. See? Done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't, I don't think it was wasted. I think we had a good time. We talked about old times and pictures and people could and I'll see it. I'll take down those black and whites. It'll take me a few days to oh, find them. When, when you can. If they're, if they're not up on a, on a shelf somewhere, then you've got to have somebody come over and get them down for you. <laughs> well, I do have that problem these days. <laughs> I want to, they should make old people's furniture that everything is low, nothing tall. <laughs> so we don't have to well, think they about should just come down lower and lower and lower, you know. But, <laughs> right. uh, anyway. Oh, and then you have to lift the bottom part because you can't bend over anymore. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's Ronnie Bennett. Uh, she has a blog called timegoesby.net. You should read it. It's really, really good. I'm telling you, even if you're oh, young, it's you it's fun. Us. What? Thanks. It's really good. I enjoy it. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you. And still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, um, everything's fucking up on me tonight. I was over modulating on the interview, and uh, uh, I just tried to, um, let me see here. Uh, can I go back and forth? Now, I, now it's working. I, uh, no, oh, I see. Okay, all right. We got a little problem here. Transition, okay, do I, can I do this? There we go, and it won't go back. No, oh, well, no, oh, well. I give up, okay, folks, I give up. Uh, oh, hum, ho, hum, ho, hum, ho, hum. Let me make sure about something here to make sure that my uh, uh, hotkeys are working correctly. Yep, yeah, there's my hotkeys. If I go clear and then I go there, and I go there, okay, and uh, let me see here. Uh, let me clear that, and let me go here, and uh, go to that, okay, and then I go okay. Now will this work uh, fine? There it works, but it won't work the other way. Son of a bitch. Well, uh, I, I, I give up. I give up. None of this is working tonight, right, but I don't care. I, you know, we'll just, you know, do what we can do here. And uh, 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 I open up the lines now, and people can start calling me. Um, and uh, I'll just get through this for two hours, and then we'll hope that this uh, works fine tomorrow night. For some reason... Uh, uh, this was doing this problem where I have, I have buttons here that I push to make things change, okay? And uh, they, don't, um, they don't necessarily change uh, sometimes. I have no idea why. So then I have to completely cut the show from, uh, from shot to shot by hand rather than by pushing little buttons, which makes my life a living hell. And then I did that interview with Ronnie, and I didn't notice that I was over-modulating, uh, which was fine. Let's see here. Here comes Charlie Wallace. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me go back. Um, there we go. Uh, and um, there we go. Um, there we go. Are we back and forth? We, no, you see? It doesn't go the other way. That's amazing. Anyway. Uh, hello, Charlie. 
Charlie. Hi. I'm here. You're there. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. Good, because everything else is fucking up tonight. I don't know why that shouldn't fuck up, too. Uh, let's see here. Here we go with uh, Phil Meyer is calling, and he probably will just immediately jump into one of these slots because, uh, well, maybe, oh, there he is. See, I told you because he was there before uh, and did the show once before and had that happen. So, okay. And, uh, gee, you know, if uh, who was at the top lot the other day? Uh, uh, Jason. Uh, J uh, yeah. No, it wasn't Jason. No, I'm not. No, uh... It was a... Uh, let me see here. I can look. It was uh, 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 Josh Wheeler. Jo Josh, that's what I meant. Josh, yeah. Jason. Yeah. Yeah. Josh, you know, the, that's what I meant. Mm. So yeah. anyway, I'm not going to move the uh, screens back and forth as much as I normally do tonight because I have to do it physically. What, do you push one to the other side of the room? I don't know. Something happened. Anyway. And then I uh, the interview with Ronnie, I was over-modulating when I recorded it. You know, one thing leads to another. I, I should just give up doing this. Uh, the interview sounded fine. Well, yeah. uh, uh, hey. it, it was a, a, you didn't hear it. I could hear it. See, I got the earphones. Uh, so, well, uh, I, I was watching it on YouTube. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. It sounded fine. Yeah. Anyway, so we, we need one more caller to put up there at the very top because these two already got their spaces that were there from last week. Yeah, we reserved them. Yeah. 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 Uh, so uh, give us a uh, give us a call. We're here. We're ready to go and uh, to talk to you. Uh, and um, uh, uh, anybody watch Jeopardy? No, but I heard about uh, the the guy didn't make it. Yeah. Well, he finally lost. He finally lost. The uh, well, librarian. I mean, well, yes. Um, but what's happening on that show that's not good for that show? Guy's dying. Uh, huh? Is that uh, no? That's Alex Trebek, isn't it? Yeah, but that has nothing to do with what I'm saying. Well, you said something's happening that's not good for the show. Well, no, what's not happening that's not good for the what's happening that's not good for the show is that this guy James Holzhauer, or however you pronounce his name, learned how to game the system. He uh -huh. learned uh -huh. the process, you know. And so that's why he was able to, like, win, 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 win. He knew he had a strategy. Knock out all the high uh, numbers first, where they don't like you to do that on Jeopardy. They like you to start at the top and work your way down. But unfortunately, that didn't, uh, didn't play in his mind. And then he also knew how to figure out where the double... Uh, 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 Jeopardy thing was. Uh, yeah, it's where all those things were. And he... Game that system to the tune of almost two and a half million dollars. But he needed to know the answers. Yeah, but he, that, that was that was the hard part. <laughs> the rest <laughs> yeah. of it was he he was a uh, he's a gambler from uh, from Las Vegas, poker yeah. player, right? And uh, so he he knew how to game this system. Well, this woman comes along, Emma Betcher. Uh, and she comes on and plays the game just like he plays it. Huh. <laughs> and she knew exactly the system because what had happened was when she was younger, when she was in high school, uh, she auditioned for Jeopardy and didn't make it. So she went back and studied the show, so much so that her thesis in college was on Jeopardy. And wow. she uh, analyzed 22,000 questions that had been asked over the period of the length of the show to see yeah. what kind of questions they would ask, how they would phrase hard ones, uh, 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 and all of that. Um, so uh, she first auditioned for the show when she was a senior in high school and wrote her master's paper on the game show as an information science student at the University of North Carolina. In her 70-page final paper, Betcher explored whether certain characteristics of a Jeopardy clue could predict the, its difficulty level. She said that she wanted to determine if a computer could predict whether a clue was easy or difficult based on the words it was using or the length of the clue. In essence, she was asking if there was a material difference between a $200 clue and a $1,000 clue. And uh, that's the kind of science she employed 
that beat him. Okay. Wouldn't you think that a thousand dollar clue was harder than a two hundred dollar clue? You would think so, yeah. and it is. But she she learned how to game that system. I mean, she she learned how how things happen. Now he she he played it better than she does because I watched her tonight and she did the show. She won like twenty five thousand dollars, you know, but she wasn't really burning up the track like James Holhauser. He had yeah. it down to us, absolute science. But it, what she does, doesn't have going for her is the gambling instinct that he has of taking the risk, you know. Huh. And uh, he, um, uh, you know, I mean, he lost uh, fair and square. And I, mean, I think in a way, I almost think he threw it, to be honest with you. I understand that the uh, question he lost on, uh, he only wagered, what, 1300 Yeah, that wasn't dollars. his normal kind of wagering. You know. Now, uh, that was in the final Jeopardy. But his he was he was taking uh, the was chance that she was going to not answer it correctly. And mm -hmm. therefore, because there was no way he could beat her if she answered it correctly. Oh, she was ahead of him? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so he, okay. Well, yeah. she beat him fair and square. It, and she bet enough so that if he bet all of his, she would beat him by $1. Oh. Okay. Okay. But I have a feeling that throughout the show, it just looked like, I'd like to say maybe he was throwing the show. Uh, mm. because Maybe I, the producers just said, hey, you know, it's no, time for you no, to go. No, no, they love it because he was getting, well, they didn't know this when they recorded it, but he got the highest ratings for Jeopardy they've had in 14 years. Okay? Uh, and, and the 14 years ago was when there was less television to watch. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. You know, so, I mean, he just, um, he burned up the track. But he, um, uh, the, the, I think that he he was coming close to beating Ken Jennings' amount. He was within uh -huh. $54,000 of beating Ken Jennings, who was the last biggest winner of uh, Jeopardy. And I think he didn't want to do that. I think he just said, this, is, ago, this right? is where I want to get out of it. Well, Look, look, people should realize what... Oh, no, that was 15 years ago, something like that. Oh, it was? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Um, here's the deal. And here's the thing that I thought was kind of interesting, is if you think about it. Um, the um, um, Now, what was I going to say? I forgot completely what I was going to uh, say. Uh, uh, you thought he, was, he wanted to throw the well, show? Well, not that he, he wanted to throw the show, but I... Uh, oh, uh, Here's the thing. He was within $54,000 of beating Ken Jennings' record. I think he didn't want to. I think, he, and oh, here's what I was going to say. Here's the thing you don't know about Jeopardy. To begin with, this woman who beat him yesterday yeah. didn't really know who she was going up against because they were recording those shows back in March. Yeah. Ah. Okay. So she was going blind into that show. She didn't know this guy had gone for almost 30 shows without losing. They didn't say anything? Huh? They didn't say anything in Probably, the Probably, I don't know. She said she didn't really, she wasn't really cowed by that. She just knew she had her own strategy and she went in with it. Mm. Yeah, uh, see, did they just say this is a reigning champ? I don't think they even give the amount at the beginning of the show. Yes, they do. They do. They do. Oh. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, I mean, I think that um, um, it, was, um, it, it, it was strange because, to begin with, it wasn't until, I think it was April, that she uh, did that show. And they do five shows a day. Yeah. Wow. Okay? So if he had a, a, a winning streak of, of 20... Then, it's only four days of uh, recording. Uh, well, uh, or thirty. Uh, yeah. it, you know, it's not. Uh, it's not the same. Let me see here. Who have we got here? We got Tony. I got Doctor Magno. I got to give Doctor Magno the top slot here. Hold on a second. Uh, you just tucked my patient in bed. Huh? What? I, I just tucked her in for the night. You, oh, really? You really think she's uh, she's out for the night? I doubt it, Alex. Uh, he's taking care Did of you. Did you drug her? 
times. Did, did you put some Benadryl in her milk? <laughs> I actually, you know what I give her? I'll show you what I give her. Oh boy! Whoa, oh, 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 wait a minute! It, uh, it's, your here comes it, the here comes the bottle. Here comes a bottle of arsenic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wait so, a minute. Oh. Charlie, on your shirt, uh, what's that? Sodium, argon, calcium, and... And samarium. And what's that together do? It just spells out sarcasm. Oh, oh I see. Oh. Okay, all right. <laughs> see, I'm, I'm looking at the at the periodic table and saying, okay, I know what those things are. Yeah, I know what those things are. <laughs> the yeah. caption says is they're the primary elements mm -hmm. of humor. So anyway, this you know this was a uh, was a big deal. Now, what also gets me is how these people kept their mouths shut since yeah. April when he lost this thing. Okay, in other words, it's been since April, so he had to yeah. go back home. He went to he went to Las Vegas. They fed it to him in Las Vegas. They gave him some well, key to the city or something like that, and he went through all of that. But they didn't know when he was going to lose because he couldn't tell anybody. But on, the, disclosure. on uh on Sunday I think it was somebody released the tape. The tape oh, got what happened? Uh, somebody had a copy of it or something yeah, and somebody lost. Yeah. And they uh they, so uh, just not to be sarcastic, but it was the Democrats that leaked it. I see. <laughs> Who they got Biden <laughs> something I must admit, did something happen? I what? Missed. Did they get Biden on something? No, 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 no. You're not listening, Tony. We're joking. He was joking about the fact they leaked the tape of oh, Jeopardy. Yeah, some Hillary's emails. You know, I'm getting yeah. excited for a little. But I think that was good. They leaked it because I think more people than ever were watching it last yeah. night. They wanted to see him get beat. Yeah, yeah. So, so, uh, man, this tooth I, being I, not being here is starting to bother me. Oh, yeah. Really? Just yeah. put some toilet paper. In it's there. a big hole back there. It's a big tooth. I'm, yeah. getting, I'm getting, I'm getting an implant. Okay. Oh, because I, I, you know, I could do that too. But then you could also get this thing that you just blow, blow up, and. Uh, well, I could get a big wad of like uh, sourdough French bread from San Francisco and wedge <laughs> it in there. You know. Yeah. And it would take months for it to get rid of it. You know. Yeah. Uh, no, it, that, that's a good no, one. No, I wasn't going to get the. Uh, I was wasn't going to get the implant. I was going to get like a clipper or something like that, you know, to fill up the space. But yeah. then uh, we checked with our insurance company, and they dictate if somebody is if a dentist is a uh, in network, mm -hmm. they have to take whatever price uh, the insurance company, which in this case was Delta Pays, Dental, yeah. tells them to charge. And so with them charging them half, to begin with, is yeah. $7,000 for this. But oh my, my, my dental plan tells them it comes in at like 3200 That's still a lot of money. Wait a minute. Then I'm, I'm only going to have to pay half of that. So You're down to 16 yeah. I'm down to $1,600. Go ahead. You know, put in the implant. What the hell? You know, I can afford it. Um, the uh, I went to the dentist yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, I got my teeth cleaned, and oh, I said, I "Guess heard. what? I'm now on Medicare, and here's my card. Uh, uh, do you guys take this?" No. And they said, "Well, we take Delta Dental, but we don't take the HMO Kaiser Dental Delta Dental." This Kaiser you got is like so say. What is this shit medicine you got, Phil? It, it's it's good. It's a good. Is it good? You know, good? Did they yeah, take? I like it. No, they don't take it. And this See, dentist... Nobody takes it, his stuff. Well, I didn't talk to the dentist. because oh. The dentist is a friend of mine. I'm going to ask him if he can sign up for it. And oh. uh, But his office manager said, no, they you know, they can't do that. They want him to do things differently, and they don't want to do that. So, uh, uh, I, unfortunately, uh, I'm either going to have to pay cash or... Uh, or find another dentist. Well, the good thing about my Delta uh, Dental is that as opposed to most Delta Dental, like yours, probably you only get $1,500 a year. Yeah, but I think yeah. I get the cleaning. Yeah, so, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. $1,500 a year. Mine, I get $2,500 a year. So, yeah, so adopt me. So so that will easily take care <laughs> of, on your plan. of the half <laughs> half for the tooth, and I pay the other half. It's, it's That's great. You know, 
And before, uh, when I was working at Sirius, my Delta Dental plan wouldn't uh, take uh, implants. Implants? Yeah, yeah. I think that's changed is what's happened. Yeah. Well, I think implants have become more mainstay, you know, uh, 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 regularly used. Yeah. And I want to get this. I want to get this implant and a, and a tooth put in there because missing a tooth like this makes me feel like a Trump voter. You know, uh, well, and, uh, and, you know. it, it's it also your your teeth move. Uh, you know, if you have a space, uh, then I was told this. by a dentist. I said, should I get it, some kind of filler in there, like a clipper or whatever? And she well, said, no. She said, back there, your tooth isn't going to move enough. And even if it does, we still just make the new tooth to fit the space. Oh. You know, so it's no problem. Well, you know, my bottom teeth are a little crooked. Mine are just, very just, crooked. And, uh, and just a little. So the, uh, hy hygiene, not, you know, the uh, hygienist says to me, well, for $5,800, we can fix that. And oh, you getting them so, nicely like me? Uh, well, no, I, I looked at it and I said, for $5,800, these teeth are staying crooked. <laughs> yeah, I, I can tell you the same thing. They don't look that bad, Phil. They it's just wanna... How much do they charge you for the cleaning? You don't mind me asking. 175 Oh, that's what they charge me, too. Yeah, yeah. that's and about what they charge. Alex, right? the cleaning is the worst part. It hurts because they're picking at everything. Yeah. No, it what they do, they don't numb the gums. No, they don't. No, not for cleaning. They don't yes, for cleaning. They, and for cleaning, My they do. They have this 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 gel, and they put it all over. Oh, really. Yeah. She didn't do that to me. She was just working my gums. Well, that's be, well, because she, mine because uses she doesn't a like Cabotron, you. which is this water jet thing. Oh, and really? then when they're done with the water jet, they start chipping away at it with a dental tool. Yeah. Did and, you get X-rays, Phil? Uh, not this time. Because they only do it once. Well, yeah, don't let them do it twice. That's dangerous. You get cancer. Well, you can get it again, Gov. I've been there. <laughs> uh, they say only uh, once Tony, a year for that. Tony, you could get an x-ray every month for the rest really? of your life and never get enough radiation to cause problems. I always worried when they took the picture. When they take the thing, I'm always saying, no, this is going to kill No, the me. only reason why, they, before they take your picture, they move, to, they move to California and then push the button is because... <laughs> um, they do this every day of the week, right? And they yeah. do it maybe ten times. Well, they could wind up having a problem, you know. Yeah. So that's that's why. Where'd he yeah. go? I thought his mother was in, tucked in bed and asleep. Well, apparently not. God, we're getting we're Benadryl. getting that wallpaper full bore tonight, aren't we? <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, is that black door go to the crematorium? <laughs> no, that's where the, it's the basement where he keeps his mother in a rocking chair. Hello, Tony. <laughs> hey. She called me already. Can you can you just close the window in the hallway? Nancy opened it, my sister. Who's going to come up four flights to get to a window on the second floor? <laughs> Good luck. I let him right in. <laughs> second story, up. man. Yeah. No, four story, man. He said, four story, we say man. it's four stories? At least two. At least She's two. And I got an alarm system on the house, not on the top window, so. Yeah. Because I think if they can come up this high, good luck. Yeah. It's just scare them right out the window. So anybody what else? are they going to do, steal the Hummels? Uh, yeah, exactly. They're not, they're not worth anything. Actually. Well, they are worth some the Disney stuff. Is anybody That's else going to call tonight, by the way? Uh, no, I think you've got a, either a Jack or a, um, uh, what's, uh, or, or a Damien audience. Wow. What, yeah. what do you mean? Got, uh, not audience, but uh, citizen panel. panel. I've got a large audience hey. tonight. That's yeah. a strange. Hey, part. Alex, we haven't heard from Renee in a while. I hope she's all right. Yeah, I don't know what happened to her. I checked. She hasn't gone to gone to her Facebook account. Oh, no. there's. Uh, wasn't there some uh, issue on the island of Hawaii? Some something. Uh, some disease or something no. is. Uh, no. It's, yeah. She's they had volcano going off, but that was on well, the other side of the island. Well, that's you know, it's not that far away as the crow. Flies. Well, all I'm saying is, I don't, I don't. You've checked too, right? Um, um, 
Uh, yeah. Tony? To- no. Oh, I, I I haven't heard from her really. No, she usually yeah. posts up. She's been totally. Yeah. Well, Charlie, have you tra- you ch- checked in with her or tried to see if she's? No, around? I mean, uh, I'm we're Facebook friends, so if she posts anything, I see it. But I haven't I've, seen I've, I've 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 written her some messages on Facebook, and she's never gotten back to me. Just saying, I'm worried about you. You know. In fact, I I have her on my watch. Well, maybe she's got a boyfriend. But that that's that, that doesn't that's not a reason why she, she might have something else to do. No, but you know, the, no, this, she's not answering her Facebook messages. Yeah. Okay. Worried. You know, uh, and and I I've tried to call her. Facebook I've something. got this thing called no. I've got this thing called Walkie Talkie, and yeah. I have her number, and I tr- her of her watch, and I tried the Walkie Talkie, and she didn't answer. You know. Huh. Patrick, I think, is in touch with her from time to time. No, you I, might be- want to ask I, him. I bet he is. I bet he hasn't heard from her either. No? You know, now, I'm not worried that something's wrong with her, uh, although, you know, who knows? It might be something is wrong with her, but I don't, I don't see it, okay? Yeah. And um, uh, so, you know, I kind of like uh, uh, just wonder. I mean, I know maybe she got tired of calling the show. That happens. Yeah. But still, I mean, we've been friends over the years, and bes- besides this program, and I would think she would reply to my uh, my messages. So yeah, well, uh, I'm going to give you an opportunity to have full houses two more times this week. <laughs> uh, it's no fill tomorrow, mm-hmm. and no fill Friday. Really? Yeah. So uh, tomorrow is. Um, uh, photo club so I can beat up on old people mm-hmm. oh boy. and uh, you the business cards, okay <laughs> Tom and Scott you can call tomorrow <laughs> night and Friday or... we have from Tom. huh I like I like when Tom calls in he he gives Phil a run for his money a little bit I don't think so you what know. do you mean everybody gives you a run for your money because you're so fucking uninformed it's ridiculous Tom's very informed ah uh, you bunch of socialists <laughs> you know Jesus Christ. Uh, so I, you know, I you ask do? you a question and you go off on me. Do you know what makes me laugh? What makes me happy? Yeah. yeah. You want me to tell you something that makes me very happy? Whenever I see that giant inflatable Trump baby. Mm-hmm. You know, I think the, 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 uh, the museum in uh, London that uh, is going to get that as a display uh, it, I, I forgot wh- the name of which museum, but uh, it's, a, it's one of their big, uh, bigger museums. Really? Yeah. But because you know that that's a United States, you know, inflatable Trump. Mm-hmm. That's been well. A, they all, probably have more than one. Well, it's probably maybe there was another one made, or they could have just uninflated that and shipped it across the pond for this. You know. Yeah. Uh, we had another one of them sitting on the can tweeting. Huh? Uh, Another giant balloon of Trump sitting on the toilet tweet, tweeting. Yes, yes. <laughs> There's that one, too. Yeah. Oh, here yeah. comes Jeff Stein. I'm Facebook friends with a guy in San Francisco that bought the upper body of the new Trump uh, mannequin mm-hmm. and uh, takes it around to places and then does photographs with it. Yeah. Oh, by the way, there's, uh, there's uh, Jeff Stein. He, I didn't even have to put him in a place. He was there already, but from the other day. So, you know. Hello, Hello Jeff. Good. How are you? I'm good. Yeah. Um, but that uh, that uh, inflatable uh, Trump, I just love. It's cute. <laughs> it's adorable. Uh, there weren't as many protesters oh, out today b- bullshit, in London. Bullshit. And uh, there were a bullshit. bunch of protesters that were yelling, "We love Trump." Oh yeah, where? Yeah. Where, in London. Where, you must I seen that one. He, I heard it on uh, uh, on the radio. Well, Trump says that uh, he said that he uh, he didn't see very, he didn't see very many protesters, and he didn't yeah. hear many protesters, and he heard that people were cheering him as he flew over in his helicopter. I he, heard he the cheers. Oh really? I actually heard. Oh, them. oh yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know where you were listening. But the crowd I, I saw listening on the radio. The crowd I saw was maybe at least five thousand people, all booing him. In fact, um, uh, what was it? What was the? Uh, uh, let me see here. 
Uh, there we go. Kevin has just joined us. Let me go and see if I can find a place for Kevin. Uh, I'm, I'll put him up here at the very uh, at the in the four spot. There we go. Uh, let me see here. Where are we? Oh, there we go. Hog rider. Okay. And um, let me see here. Why why didn't that uh, come in? Hold on a second, folks. Hog rider. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Are you are you there? Yeah, you're there. Okay. Where are you? Hmm. Huh. Hmm. I can't, for some reason I can't, well, let me put them in the sixth spot. Let me see what we get in the sixth spot here. Uh, if we uh, get... Um, it's not uh, frozen to me. Huh? He's frozen. Yeah, yeah. There's some reason why we don't have him here. That's it. Okay, hold on a second, folks. We will, uh, we will do this. Uh, let me call him back. No, I don't. He's not here on the list. So, Kevin. Hmm. Hmm. Let me see here. Kevin. Kevin Stopper. Um, chatted over a year ago. Is that him? Okay, let me add him and call him and see what happens. Kevin, give us a call. And see if see if Kevin answers that. I have no idea if he's going to answer. Uh, no, I guess he's not. Um, oh, there he is. There he is. Okay, we got him. All right. Hello, Kevin. How are you? He's frozen again. Boy, yes, some, he started to say something. Somebody at his house must be using video games. Or something online. But now he's frozen again. Oh, well. He'll call back. Wow. What, what is that about? That is strange. That is very strange. Hang on. Oh, there you are. Okay, hang on. Am I back? Uh, uh, no, you're still frozen. Am I back? I uh, hear him. No, you're... Give it a second. Yeah. Give it a second. Yeah, give, give it a, a second. second. There you go. He's moving now. He's moving now. Okay, there you go. There you go. Da, 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 da. Hey, no, Kevin. That was me. That was all me. How you doing, Kevin? Now he's no, he's not frozen. Okay. How you doing, Kevin? Okay, let me uh, just make sure I'm on my right network here. Okay, you had a bad uh, bad Wi-Fi network. Is that it? Yeah, for some reason, I've got an extension here that goes downstairs, and it jumps onto that for some reason. Yeah. I don't know why. It's okay. a 2G extension. Well, it's really slow. Figure, figure it out. Um, uh, that, that was a hilarious part of his press conference today was uh, Trump uh, saying that, uh, oh, the people loved him in the streets and so on. And all of a sudden, you're seeing a shot outside on the streets, and people are – the best one I saw was uh, – uh, Night King for President. <laughs> that was from that was a reference to uh, Game of yeah. Thrones. Just another prick with no wall. That one went over, <laughs> over me. Just but a, I don't know if you you know that's that that's what I was putting up. I don't know if that froze on yeah. that or not. But that's yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah, that now, was. Um, what's her name? Renee was using that picture as her uh, as yeah, her, her icon yeah. picture. Yeah. Yeah, my daughter loved it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how how did you guys? Uh, how did, uh, weren't you guys just really thrilled by the diplomacy our president was able to engender uh, in oh, his yeah, visit to England? Job. Huh? He did a good job. Yeah. Did but you? By the way, by the way, did you see him in that tuxedo last night yeah, with his pot belly hang with, with his pot belly hanging out? Why was the vest so long? I don't know. I think somebody had it out for him when they fitted him for that. I thought the rental place sent the wrong vest with the coat. Well, sure. that coat was for the Rabinowitz bar mitzvah. And, uh... <laughs> but, I mean, can I ask a stupid question? I'm not making fun of his weight, but, Alex, when he gets dressed like that, are people afraid to tell him, listen, you just don't look good like this? 
Does well, everybody's see? afraid to tell him that something's wrong. Otherwise, he, he wouldn't be doing it. half the like shit he does. Tight. It's like two pounds of bologna in a one pound. I bag. mean, he couldn't. <laughs> he, he couldn't wait to land in in England before he he he. he Went after the mayor of London yeah. and and and, uh, rightfully and, so. and Meghan Markle. The mayor of London went after him first. But now I, it would have been okay for him not to, He's you know, go fun. down to his level. Well, he did. He is, you know, and and, and the level that the the the, the mayor of uh, London is a lot more classy in his put downs because I saw him today and he said, "Well, you know, what do you expect out of an eleven-year-old?" <laughs> I still can't get over when you went to the party that Cara Miller was made of you. It's almost like... We're, we're, we're talking about London right now. We're talking about Trump. We're not talking about fucking Carol Miller. I know. I find that funny. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Let's get back to Trump. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I don't know where that came <laughs> from. She's yelling at him. <laughs> that had to be funny. I wish I was there. Like, what's up? Oh, it was one? hilarious. It was very, very mean of her. Very mean. So, I like what you said. Thirty years later, she's still got yeah. a grudge. Thirty <laughs> years later, she's got a grudge. That's how much of an effect I have on people. I mean, I find that I find you humorous because it's like I can't believe this. But you're right, Alex Trump. He's always fighting, always fighting with somebody. Well, I mean, you know, I I thought that uh, uh, when you're going somewhere on what is considered a diplomatic visit, it's not a anything else but a diplomatic visit was the main reason for it. You don't go there and start yelling about people and calling them names. And then the worst part is putting down, you know, the Duchess, uh, Meghan Markle, uh, when her <laughs> husband shows up at the, uh, at the uh, reception because he's got to be there because he's the prince. Oh, my God. And he stands at the bar. <laughs> yeah, you know he what I would have... He, he was standing uh-huh. back there with Ivanka. And I think yeah. if I were him, I would have looked at her and said, after what he said about my wife, anybody else would slug him. That, I yeah, think that no was shit. taken out exactly. of context. Uh, she had she had posted something. Uh, oh, I think it was on Twitter. In 2016. Uh, so, in, in, two, in 2016 when he was running. Somebody showed it to Trump. In 2016 and, when he was and running. Trump said... That's nasty. My friend. And so they no, made it Trump sound like... said, I didn't know she was nasty. Not you you know nasty. what was nasty? Oh, okay. She said, she said she if Trump nasty, gets elected... So she wasn't, she, she wasn't do, do you know what she said, nasty. Phil? Do you know what she said? No. Then well, how can you make a statement like this if you don't know because what she I said? I heard the comment. Well, I what heard, was it? What was the comment, Phil? I heard the comment what was uh, it? around Trump. Well, well, what uh, was it? Well, Kevin just said it. What? Say it again, Kevin. I heard she was nasty. No, right. that's that's what he said. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's that's what but what, what was the nasty comment she made? I didn't know she was nasty. And what was the comment that he that, that she made? She made. I don't know, and I don't care. Okay. Well, you should oh, care because you would know. Thing. You would then know that it wasn't nasty at all. Difference. It was a political statement in which he said, "If he gets elected, I'm moving to Canada." Oh, that's shit. nasty. No, that's not nasty. That's like me saying, uh, you know, if he gets elected, uh, I'm going to leave this country. Is that a nasty remark? No, it's a remark. Oh, that would be doing people a favor. No, but that isn't. <laughs> that doesn't deserve the kind of response he gave about her. But then he turns around and says the same thing that you're saying right now. He tried to turn it a different way. Yeah, like she. Had All t- I heard was the turn. Yeah, well, yeah. you only listen to half of it, and that's why you're a Trumpian. Well, why should I listen to something that she said? In of course not, because if you that's if you true. if you listen to things, <laughs> and if you knew <laughs> what was going on, you wouldn't be for Trump. Uh, no, I'd still be for Trump. How about those tariffs? You know, oh, what happened? How come he had to bring the wall? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? The new the new form of the government was wait a minute, wait a minute. You mean the new form of taxes? Yeah. Well. It's the only weapon he has left because yeah, but the uh, Phil, Congress is Phil, Phil, he's taxing us. He's he's costing us twenty five percent of our income. You don't have to eat that stuff. You don't have to buy that stuff. You know? How about the fact that the majority of Republicans in the Senate are telling him do not do this thing with Mexico? Good. Then 
let the Congress uh, come around and enact the laws that they need to stop what's going on at the border. No, if no, 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 Phil, no, Phil, choice. Phil, the, the Republican senators got together and said, we don't want you to do the, the Mexican tariffs. That's because they don't have balls. Oh, and, Jesus. You know, they, they have no huevos, exactly. Really? Yeah, you know, I mean, these guys, they're only worried about their real election. You know, you're getting, you're getting, money. you're like, getting like James Holhauser or whatever his name was. You're getting very predictable. Oh, oh really? Getting? <laughs> <laughs> yes, getting very predictable. <coughs> Went down the wrong way. Shout <laughs> Hmm? Yes, you, uh, can Jeff. You can now. Jeff. Medicare, just in case you choke. Jeff. Do you cover the 80% oh, Careful. Oh, oh, my God. He's Tom's putting a cursor on him. <laughs> What's Jeff, the Jeff, Jeff Hold on. Jeff has his hand up. Yes, Jeff. The, the one thing that I heard that Trump gave the presentation to the queen, mm -hmm. and he had to read it. It was all pre-written, and, and he was reading it while while uh, he was speaking to her and everybody else and he did it okay job mm -hmm. i mean you know he didn't say anything that was wrong i think he did he represented uh, the united states nicely in this in this function it is the 75th anniversary of d-day and uh it's a solemn occasion where uh you know you need to honor those that that fought uh, that you know gave their lives for uh, the freedom that we have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he even mentioned that she worked on a truck. Truck. She worked on a truck yeah. when she was in the service. Oh, yeah. the queen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Before she was queen. Nothing he would have done. Yeah, he wouldn't serve. He had a spur. Yeah, because he's a draft dodger. It's right. he's a draft dodger. Yeah, I different I war. Yeah, Different but war. but draft war dodgers war. are draft dodgers. No, it isn't. Service is service. Uh, Vietnam was a different war. Service. Oh, is service. now you're distinguishing. You're, you're young enough you, that. Oh, so so you you it's, you were okay with the people who went to Canada? No. Well, yes. Uh, I you know I I did not That's support nasty. the Vietnam War, and if what they needed to do was to go to Canada. Oh, so that made that made what, you, I just got it. That What's made that, nasty. That, that that made Trump. Uh, a uh, um, it made Trump a uh, a hero, war hero, the war hero. Yeah, because he, uh, yeah, yeah <laughs> because he didn't have to go to Canada. Now you know, put his name on a boat. The, people at that time didn't the, of my age and didn't support the war at that time. Didn't feel that uh, that you know we should support that war, and I didn't support it at the time. And I probably wouldn't support it today. But uh, these people did what they had to do. If they had to go to Canada, they went to Canada. If they, uh, uh, you know, if they burned their selective service card, they burned their selective service card. They, you know, you know it's, uh, it was not a, it was a time when we saw people every night on the news mm -hmm. uh, getting killed. And, uh, and, it was, and it was the first war that was televised to where, you know, you looked at it and it wasn't just the guys getting killed. It's like, why are we there? You know? Yeah. Why are we there? And uh, so if what they had to do was go to Canada, then, you know, I supported that. Mm. I didn't go to Canada. My mother wanted me to go. I, I, was, I was lucky that I was in the very last draft and that draft was uh, was uh, not used and uh i was number 64 so i would have gone you know they would have taken me mm -hmm. my grades do, certainly didn't allow for <laughs> me not to not to go yeah i was the part of the class that made the well top it's nice to know that you have some scruples but uh yeah, they're only scruples that are self-serving not necessarily uh, you know did you support that war no but i served you served at a time that uh, I served, there was a police I action. Served, I, I served when there was a police action, and I served during the time of the Gulf of Tonkin. 
No, you were out. No, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. Time. No, I wasn't, Phil. You were being, you no, said no, that you were no, mustered No, I out. was in the Navy when the right. Gulf of Tonkin incident happened at Armed, um, uh, Armed Forces Radio and Television, um, Armed Forces Radio and Television Service, and uh, I, um, uh, uh, it, it happened while I was in the service. Now, you shared some interesting information about the Gulf of Tonkin. Yes, which I got from people when I was being mustered out who had been in the Gulf of Tonkin when that happened. And they said, what happened? What? That nothing they went said on out there. Nothing went on. Yeah, but th that's not the point. The point is, I couldn't. So you, you served at a time when nothing was going on. Oh, if Jesus, you're in, Phil. you're in. Something could go on. You're in. Well, Done. Man, you mean that kind of like being a cop, where you know when you're doing cop work, you. I, I didn't be in a try. I didn't. Right. You know, that's Phil, right. you are that's so right. full I of bullshit. I served my time in the United States Navy. I served my country. You did you not. Sign the paper, okay. You're in. I so put fuck in you. Years fuck you. As a you know, Obama said that if you wanted to go into the Peace Corps or you wanted to do some other type of service uh, to your community. Obama uh, said this? Yes, Obama said this at a time where, uh, you know, people were trying to become citizens and so forth. You, you, could, you could serve your community. You, you could volunteer and do, do a bunch of stuff if you wanted to. Uh, I, 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 I don't know what you're talking sushi. about, Phil. Right, we're not no, talking right. about Vietnam. Uh, well, what we're talking I about Vietnam. Shut up, Phil. We're talking years, about Vietnam. I gave 20 years to a high crime community at, without pay. Oh, so, oh, yeah. Okay. So, but so, yeah. Okay. So, if you say you served, yeah, and you were with uh, that force of people that beat up on black people. Well, the only time you know I was in front of a microphone was when I had to call in the crime, you know, and you know, and you served in Hollywood. I served so, in Hollywood, but at least I, w I, I think I did something very good. Do you, do you know there was a price on my head in China? Yeah. No, you didn't. You said that. Huh? Yeah, there was a price on my head in China because uh, we were considered, all the people that were armed forces, t radio and television service, were considered propagandists for the United States. And that signal went into China and... So I was considered a propagandist. Now, was Tokyo Rose your competition? Oh, Phil, <laughs> you know. I mean, I'm trying to tell you something that's a, a matter yeah, of I, fact. Yeah, I understand. You said, uh, you've, you've said that before. Well, I appreciate your service. The, the thing is, uh, you know, I didn't, there was no draft when, uh, when I was, you know, when it was time for me to go. That draft was ended that week. Mm -hmm. So I kind of lucked out. Yeah. Be kind of lucked out. What would you? Know, you... But Kevin, Kevin says, "Hey, you know, you, you should go." Well, but Kevin is uh, six years younger than me, so there was no there was no draft there either. Yeah, well, I I volunteered, you know, and uh, I uh, I was very fortunate. Uh, I, uh, the reason I got an Armed Forces Radio and Television service is I lobbied for it. No, I didn't know anybody. I didn't have a parent who uh, put a word in for me with anybody or whatever. Uh, I just simply got a hold of them and said, listen, I'm being mustered into the Navy, and I'm a broadcaster, and would you like to have a real live broadcaster there? And uh, uh, one day I'm sitting in, uh, on the ship waiting for the ship to take off and go to, like, Japan, and I get the, they say, who do you know at the Department of Defense? And I said, nobody. And they said, well, you've just been reassigned to the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service in Hollywood. And the thing Why was, did you... with Armed Forces Radio and Television Service, if they wanted somebody, uh, they were Department of Defense. They were a step up over the Department of the Navy, the Army, whatever. And they could just say, we want this guy to be assigned to us. Yeah. So, and that was your first foray with the CIA? No, I didn't have anything <laughs> to do with the CIA, but I had uh, a top secret clearance. Well, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm curious... Why uh, did you have to uh, enroll in the military? Did you have yes. to? Yes, yes, absolutely, oh. because there was a draft at that time. Yeah. There wasn't a war going on, but there was a draft at that time, and it was either 
be, choose what service I was going to go into or let them eventually draft me, and I decided I would rather be the master of my own fate, and I, uh, I, I joined the Navy Reserve, and I spent a year going to meetings, and then after a year, part of the Navy Reserve was you had to spend two years on active duty, and so I went off to active duty for two years. Yeah. So, uh, Are you finding anything wrong with this, Phil? No, no, I'm just curious. Was there a lottery at the time that you uh, uh, no, had a... No, it was, no. Yeah, there so was a lottery. The selective service, it was a lottery. I, I think and it was a lottery, yeah. I can't remember either that or it was just that, you know, you got drafted. Did you, well, did you know your number? Uh, no, I didn't know anything about my number or whatever. I just decided... I thought I it was, was 1969 was the first time they had the lottery. Yeah, it, I don't know if it was a lottery at that point. Well, they eliminated in 72. Right. 73. Well, I, w uh, I went in in, um, when did I go in? I went in in, wow, I'm trying to remember now. Six, uh, uh, 1776. No, it wasn't 59. That's the bicentennial year. No, I went in, uh, I went in uh, to the Navy in 63, I think it was, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, 63 and got out in 65. Okay. So at 65, it was heating up in Vietnam. It, it already had. The Gulf, of the, Kin, the Gulf of Tonkin happened, and that's when we declared war on North Vietnam, predicated on that incident. Did we ever actually declare war? No. I don't Cox think so. Never declared war, no. Well, whatever happened, we, we upped the ante on the whole deal. Yeah. yeah, well, Johnson started bombing Hanoi, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, was it Johnson that did that? Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. Johnson, well, well, yeah. part of the problem with Johnson was, and one of the reasons he didn't run again for president is he didn't know how to handle that situation. He did not have a grasp on what we would call foreign affairs. He was very much a domestic president, a very good domestic president. But um, he, he, he admitted he didn't know a lot about foreign affairs, and that thing was dogging him. It was just dogging him well, completely. Nixon, Nixon, Nixon was waving a carrot, uh, and probably an empty one, because what he said was, uh, "I, I have a secret yeah. uh, 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 to end the war." But his secret was to keep it going for another four or five years, and then. Pull well, out. well, but the the problem with Nixon was the uh, the, the he had a uh, when he first went into office. He was handed a peace proposal, mm -hmm. which he then uh, denied and, and wouldn't go for. And so the, the uh, war went on for another four or five years. And at the end, he signed a peace proposal. And it was the same exact peace proposal he could have signed five years earlier. Do you know that they discussed the shape of the table at, in Paris? Uh, for yes, we know that story. We know that story. But the point is that the... Tony uh, doesn't know it. That's it. He doesn't need to know it. Um, okay. But, I mean, that, that uh, you know... Um, so, I mean, um, yeah. So, I was, uh, you know, I was in when all that was going down. And uh, um, do not fault me for my service because you were a fucking coward. In uh, 1960, uh, what was there, 200 advisors that Kennedy had sent? No, 1,500. 1,500, I think it was, the initial wave of, the initial? of, uh, the initial wave of advisors. It was yeah. like 1,500, yeah. And, uh, all right. So and it wasn't until 65 that Johnson started bombing Hanoi, and, uh, you know, that's... Uh, we had three years. It of, was a uh, it was a miscalculation that whole war because Ho Chi Minh was actually a good guy. Yeah. Oh, he's a great guy. Yes, he was, Phil. You know where he studied? I think in the United States. Yes, he did. But so did so did Fidel Castro. He also he worked at baseball. the he also worked at the Omni Hotel in Boston. Yeah. Yeah, as a as a waiter, uh, he knew how to speak perfect English, and when he went back. And they created the Constitution for North Vietnam. Do you know what its preamble is? Um, 
yeah, it's probably based on the United States. It is identical to the United States because he loved the United States and he loved Americans. And what happened was we just didn't treat him like somebody he should love. But he was ready to talk with us and to, to make peace. Uh, um, Ho Chi Minh was not a guy who was loved being on a war footing, okay? This was not in his DNA. And he was one of the great men of our, uh, of our, of our times. But we made him an enemy. And you got to realize that the Vietnamese people couldn't recognize the difference between us and any of the other, like, 25 different invaders. The French. And, yeah, uh, that had taken over that country. And so when we came along, there, there, there was no difference. We were just an extension of what had already been going on for, for a long time. Hmm. So thought I'd just give you a sense of history. Yeah. Uh, but uh, anyway... So I, uh, you know, I, I just, uh, I'm, I'm embarrassed by our president. Do I have the I right? I thought he did a good job. I thought he was on better behavior than he normally is, but he still took an opportunity to take his swipes and to spread his lies. I mean, he shouldn't have even talked about the crowds because people were watching the crowds on television. And even if you watched it over at Fox and they were walking around with signs and booing and yelling and, you know, hey, Trump, we don't want you here, you know. Um, so, I mean, to, to deny that that existed, uh, he should have just not even talked about it. But he goes out of his way to talk about, it. oh, they love me. The British people love me. What is uh, what, what he's is it? actually... Uh, his uh, rating or his uh, his numbers in in Britain are up uh, compared to what they used to be, uh, and part of it is his support for Brexit. What do you mean they were twelve and now they're thirteen? Uh, well, he was not liked in in Britain. Uh, he still uh, isn't, Phil. No, I, I understand, but there's been a, there's been an increase. Somebody in his, had a uh, sign that said, "Even the Queen doesn't like you." Yeah. <laughs> He's hated. And, Huh? I don't think the queen knew who was there. Actually, she did a great job, too. Uh, she didn't sound 92. She does what she does. She she has a, she has goes into this um, diplomatic mode, and she knows not to call people names. Yeah. Did, um, did you see simple. when they were marching? I mean, I would have loved banquet? it if the queen had looked at him and gone, you're a fucking douche. You know. <laughs> Well, he was getting along with May as well. But did you notice that when everybody was going to the dinner table at the banquet, nobody was happy? It didn't look like one smile in the crowd. Is that, well, because, is that part of the... No, that's because that Trump the was there. It's because Trump was there. No, they always look like that. No. They're English. They, no. When they, showed the, uh, when they showed the helicopter landing, you know, I was kind of hoping the helicopter was going to come in and land on the lawn and then... And then the queen would come out with a bucket of chicken and say, here, get off my fucking lawn. <laughs> Let him take off with his bucket of chicken. I think that's what they serve. Yeah. Imagine they serve KFC. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I'll take the extra crispy. Mm -hmm. They served yeah. halibut and uh, oh, something really? else that didn't sound Lamb. so Lamb. Lamb. Lamb, yeah. They, they couldn't even come up with a steak, those guys? I was going to say, he couldn't you, even get a steak. You know, in England, have you ever had the meat in England? But wait a minute. Let's go back to that, him in that tuxedo. <laughs> yeah. I like the tuxedo. I mean, what a fucking pig he's turned into. Yeah, he has. I've got a skinny tuxedo and a fat tuxedo, and right now I still don't fit in the fat tuxedo. <laughs> it's just like you said, the clothes doesn't look nice on Like, It's not about his weight. Like, When he puts that on, doesn't he see like, oh, it's really tight on me? Maybe I should get something yeah, baggy. But how good did his wife Melania look? I mean, she she looked good. Well, she's a piece of ass, but you know, she I mean, really uh, is. She the, looked good. Well, she's a you know with all her um, and, and, plastic and she surgery and with stuff. that uh, white outfit when she showed up with the black uh, thing. Uh, she she kind of had that uh, Princess Diana look. Uh, I think the uh, the outfit was a tribute to Princess Diana. She, she looked great. Yeah, well, you know. Did anybody see uh, Jared Kushner on Axiom? 
How's he doing? If, if, he, if, if you go, if you go oh, to was war, that a, when he, he was interviewed about the Israeli thing, yeah, the uh, Israeli uh, Palestinian, and also this, his his relationship with the Saudis and uh, how they were. Yeah, know, he knew nothing. He knew nothing. I mean, he is. I thought maybe Jared Kushner at least was bright. I'm ge- beginning to change my mind about that. He's Do not Republican really. He's not. He's a. He's another douche. He's a puppet. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you, you guys are really going for the high quality words in assessment. Uh, yeah. Douche puppet. You know, he's he's doing things that if, if he can negotiate a peace with the Palestinians, they're they're having they're having a summit. Uh, the Palestinians didn't want to attend, but what they're trying to do is bring business into uh, the Gaza Strip so that uh, they can create uh, more wealth there and uh, you know bring those people out of poverty. Oh my God! What are they going to do? Sell them the bowls to beg with? No, they're going to try to get industry to go in there and no, give play people it. jobs. You know something? He's got work. he's got very white answers and to very non-white them. questions. Oh. You know, he it it shows he knows nothing about what's going on, has no sensitivity towards it, doesn't right. realize what the plight of the Palestinians has been over the years, how they are the forgotten people in that whole crisis. You know, you forget them. They keep launching missiles. No, they're the not launching the missiles. Hamas is launching the missiles. They don't have missiles. The Palestinians are living out in the desert, starving for Christ's sake. Well, the ones that are in the areas that land was given for peace—that certainly hasn't been the, uh, you know, the answer. Oh yeah, like the, that fucking douche uh, uh, Netanyahu, who, by the way, sounds like uh, you know how you had like. Uh, uh, what do you call him? Brad and uh, what, what? They come up with these names. Angelina, like, Brangelina, Brangelina, oh, Brangelina, and things like that. Netanyahu is a name for two people who both use Netscape and Yahoo. Yeah. Netanyahu. Yeah. You know. uh, oh, talking about Netscape. Uh, uh, there was a, a phony uh, a video that was put up of. Um, of uh, uh, the Speaker of the House, Pelosi. Uh, they slowed it down. They changed the speaking pitch. Speaking of Netscape, how, do, how do you, speaking of Netscape, and then you because go to that this store? Is Facebook. Well, uh, they're a little different. To begin with, Netscape doesn't exist anymore. I understand, but it reminded me of this Facebook thing. Facebook gave up the name of the guy that put it up, posted it anonymously. And uh, I guess it's some, you know, average Joe. Uh, Trump supporter, but uh, you know th- this is a guy who doesn't have any money. Uh, he drives a forklift for a living. I thought maybe well, it was sounds Josh. like a Trump Trump guy to me. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, so you know, so do you ever shut up, Phil? Out. Phil, do you ever shut up? And uh, all these people, I look at Charlie. It's like he should say something. Kevin is very verbose when he wants to talk. S- so is Jeff. But no you problem. monopolize. Shut up. You, you monopolize the conversation. Well, don't give me the <laughs> finger. You do. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, it's not like this is like a group here. And I, I was just looking at Charlie. I'm going, he hasn't said a word. Kevin hasn't said a word. Jeff hasn't said a word. Tony said a few words here and there. Look, yeah. I just muted. Uh, I can go away. He won't even I shut up when back. I ask him to shut up. Well, hey. Enjoy yourself. No, I'm just saying. Oh, see, now he's playing. There's the 11 year old right there. There we go. He's worse than me. When my mother, when I didn't get what I, that's when I didn't get my Atari, Alex. I got all mad. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to talk to you. Up on it, no, I, I didn't just. Realize she didn't have the money. Kevin, what, oh. do you, what do you think about what's going You'll get the Atari. Don't worry about it. Yeah, don't I worry. Get- don't worry, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, like they can't, let me they see don't here. To yeah. yeah. What's $200? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what to say. Kevin, what would your take about what's going on in uh, in in this diplomatic visit to to Britain? Oh, I told you already. I mean, it's, it was ridiculous. Why do you have to bring his whole goddamn family? I, he yeah, did bring the whole family, didn't he? Jared was there, Ivanka was there. 
uh, uh, the two sons were there. Uh, he thought he was royalty. Yeah, you know, I mean that's that's why they, that's why you would bring the whole family, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, you see, we got so many of these people uh, that are part of British royalty that <laughs> you know he can't he can't just let us talk. What happened? What is that? Is that your uh, is that uh, your enema? What that's is Kim that? Kim Jong Un's bomb. Look at him! Look at him! <laughs> that's what it looks like. <laughs> Well, you say I'm like an 11 year old. Now this is a. Uh, uh, there he goes again. Know. I can I was having a nice discussion with Kevin, and here you are. Yeah, it's a rocket thing. It, it yeah. blows dust away. I mean, from and lens. and and Jeff stays quiet for hours at a time. Well, you know. You know, if I have something to say, I have something. That's to say, right. Phil just goes on forever. Yeah, I I always want him to go to Israel. We can't figure out why he hasn't gone. Yeah, why don't you move to Israel, Phil? <laughs> He's thinking about it, right? Uh, I don't know if there's a vibrant carpet business in Israel. <clears throat> Haven't you heard about those magic carpets in that part of the Flying world? Ones. Nah, that's Persia. <laughs> Close enough. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, let me see here. Um so anyway, it's a no, nobody saw the uh, the Jared Kushner interview. It was really, if you get a yes, chance, I did. Oh, oh, you did see it. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, he's an idiot. Yeah, he really is. He he really comes across as I'm not supposed to say anything, and I don't know anything anyway. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 and the reason I don't know is I don't know. It, yeah. I mean, he. Uh, uh, I mean, I expected when I went into watching the interview that I was going to see somebody that was somewhat uh, uh, intelligent, um, and I and what I saw was a guy who had absolutely had no idea what the rest of the world is like. You know, Alex? these are people that live in a bubble, and they. Yes. What were you going to say? Uh, let me interrupt you. Alex, can you, be, you think because when people are so wealthy that they lose touch with reality? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. uh, it's, you it's know, like it, it, it's that, that Trump has never had to live as a poor person ever in his life, even when he's lost a billion dollars. You know? But he probably he never shopped before, like food. I, I'm sure he doesn't know what a scanner is at a, at a checkout stand in a, in a grocery store. You know, when's the last time you think he ever went shopping for food? Can you imagine him in aisle three looking for food? Yeah, no, 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 no. You got your stop and shop card? He would laugh at you. He was like, I don't have my stop and shop card. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I, I imagine that uh, and these are very privileged people. They're not privileged because they are exceedingly wealthy, but that they've given people the idea they are. And so everything is given to them for free. <laughs> That's what it's all about. I used to, it always used to get me when I was, uh, when, I, when, I, uh, when I used to be famous, uh, when I would go somewhere and, and the owner of the restaurant would say, oh, no, 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 we're, we're taking care of it here, you know. Oh, I, I, would, I would go into restaurants and hardly ever have to pay for, for dinner. And wow. I, I finally got to the point where I would say to the owner, look, I want to pay for this, and I'm going to pay for it. Now, the day may come, and I hope it never does, <laughs> that I am so on the down and outs that I do need a free meal, and then I will come in here and cash in on it, okay? But right now, I want to pay. And I always found it weird that people who can't afford to pay Never have to, you yeah. know. Yeah, that is strange. You figure, you know what, if you can afford it, yeah. you got to pay. Yeah, Jeff? Yeah, my question to you, Alex, is, did, you have, did you ever use your uh, your ticket? No, most of those people are out of business now. <laughs> yeah, they're either out of business but, or they forget And, and I, I, sometimes I would say, look, uh, I want, I'm going to pay for my dinner. Because I want to. I don't want you to have to say, hey, it's free, it's on the house. I said, I've got money, I can afford the dinner, that's why I'm here, okay? 
I said, but one day somebody's going to come in here and they're hungry. I want you to feed them. You know, I want you to give somebody a free meal who needs it, not me. And um, they all agreed with me. And then, you know, who knows what happened. But anyway. Um, oh, by the way, I found out what that uh, restaurant was in, uh, in, uh, the, um, uh, in the marina that I used to go to all the time, that I used to take people to. Did I ever take you there, Phil? Probably not. Uh, no, it opened up after uh, I stopped talking to you. Uh, it was called Iggy's. Izzy, Izzy's, 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 Izzy's. 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 Yes. Uh, I'm going to Bobo's uh, Friday. Yeah, Ooh. what's Bobo's? It's on Lombard. What's Bobo's? It's a steakhouse like Izzy's. Oh, is it new? Uh, it's the first time I'm, I'm going to it. Well, Izzy's doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, it does. It does? Yeah. Not at that location. Yeah, it's on Steiner uh, off of Chestnut. Oh, wait a minute. I did Lombard look the Chestnut. other day, and it's still... And then there's in... another one in, in Marin. Uh, yeah, I know there was one in Marin, but it wasn't as good as the other one. Uh, Izzy's isn't as good as it used to be either. I Izzy's, uh, here it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, it's the place with all the yeah. mustards. 435 Steiner Street. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. Take the truck. But I wonder if it's still owned by the same guy. And there's Izzy San Carlos and there's Izzy San Francisco, but it doesn't say anything about Izzy's Marine County anymore. So, 435 Steiner is San Francisco. The 33345 Steiner. 3345. Well, yeah. that might be it. It's yeah. it's between Lombard and Chestnut on Stein. Yeah, I know. I used to eat there all the time, you know. Yeah. Spent uh, thousands of dollars a year eating there. I used to love it because it was in the neighborhood. And whenever I went in, he made sure I got a seat. That was that was yeah. the other part of being a celebrity. You know. By the way, a lot of people watching us tonight. Yeah. Yeah, I get. I get. I saw the numbers go up when I made you shut up. I, I wonder if that has anything to do with it. That's got you. You know, uh, and if we can keep it quiet, it'd be two and a half days without Phil this week. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you. You know, I'll give you three if you want. It's, uh, you know, I I call to be supportive, but hey, it's not a problem. Hey, I appreciate you know. your support. Okay. I just want everybody else. Uh, Charlie, you haven't said anything in the last half hour. No, I'm just listening. <laughs> oh, boy. Let me see here. What? San Francisco. Yeah, I, I just looked it up. Yeah, they got one in San Carlos and one in San Francisco, so maybe they closed Marin. Yeah, they probably did. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if it's owned by the same people anymore either. See, yeah. I liked Perry's. Uh, I like the La Barca room. You know, these are probably all places that you used to frequent. No, never heard of any of them. La Barca was on Lombard and Fillmore. No, I never heard of them. And Perry's is uh, Union and Laguna. I think I've heard of Perry's. Um, but Izzy's was always my favorite. Whenever I wanted a steak, that's where I went. They were always good. You know what happens? You go, how many times have you gone to a restaurant? And uh, at the restaurant, it's terrible. The, the food is great, rather. And then all of a sudden, one day you go in and it's gotten bad. You know? That happens. Yeah, it you happens. Why? why? It's greed. What happens is the things that made the restaurant great, they stop doing once they start getting famous. The portions change. The quality of the food that they use changes. And, uh, and usually not for the better. Well, I, I, I only once had a bad meal at Izzy's. For some reason, that night, the steak wasn't good. It How can you fuck up a steak? You can fuck up a steak really easy. If I want it rare and you made it medium yeah. rare, you just fucked up my steak. Send it back. I had to. But it was only once that I ever had to send back a steak there. They made this blackened fillet that I loved along with their cream spinach, which was to oh, wow. die for. and spinach. and shit. You know what's in the cream spinach when you send the steak back. Yeah, and oh, then and it's spermatozoa, okay? <laughs> uh, well, it doesn't sound so bad when you say spermatozoa. Yeah. 
<laughs> it, but, uh, 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 and a longer a chucka. Yeah. No, but and they had the uh, the potatoes, which were uh, cheese and potato. Yeah, the uh, uh, al gratin. Al gratin, and it was just to die for. I mean, that was just a great meal. And then I would have the Caesar salad to start out with. So, you know. Yeah. Those were in Did the days when Joe's. I, Joe's years ago, because my original father, Joe's? my father used to take me to original Joe's. It was on Chestnut. It was right in your area. Well, not that Joe's. Joe's I uh, went to was oh, down Westlake? was down near Market Street. Oh, because there's Westlake. Joe's, well, Joe, Joe's Joe's was rich. everywhere. Joe's was everywhere, yeah. and they had a thing called the for breakfast called the Joe's Special. With the hamburger and the eggs. No, ham and the spinach. And the spinach, yeah. Right. Yeah. And that was a Joe's special. My father would always order the Joe's special. Yeah, Most people that. would order the Joe's special. That was, it, was, yeah, it, it was a thing you went for. It, was called, it, no, it, was, it wasn't called a special for nothing. <laughs> it was very good. So anyway, you know, uh, it, was, uh, it was terrific. Uh, and, and Jeff uh, is trying to... Yes, oh, Jeff, yeah. Alex, so... So what's the great steak place for New York for you? You know, I haven't found one. Oh, wait a minute. Well, I, there, there's uh, a Peter famous Lucas one. Is supposed to be good. Peter Lucas. Uh, yeah, I've heard uh, things. I never went there. My brother went there. They said everything's a la carte. Is that how it is in all the places, Alex, where they get a bunch yeah. of steak? And I don't know. I just, I've never gone to many steak houses in New York City. Is there a Morton's in New York? Yeah. No. I don't think there is, no. There is. Yeah, Ruth. There Ruth. is. Maybe Ruth Chris. Yeah. You know, um, there's, Ruth, is good. there's Ruth. Ruth's Chris. Yeah. Um, I like Ruth's Chris. It's consistent. Yeah, I, I just don't like it because it's a chain. You know, I. I uh, yeah. But I do have favorite restaurants we go to. We have one right up the street we go to, that is just a wonderful little family uh, restaurant. And it's really Born terrific. Born in Harduck? Huh? No, no. Born in Harduck? No, the f film, the food is, is great. You know? I like it. Every time we go in there, we're never disappointed. Uh, and then uh, we go to uh, Babo's uh, down in the village, which was owned by uh, Mario Batali, not anymore, and the, and the Bastianiches. And it's a really nice restaurant. It's really a great restaurant. The service is exquisite. <laughs> They've got it down to a science. You know, you never have to worry about your water glass not being filled or, you know, if you're running low on your diet soda, they ask you if you want more. They, oh, they're always on top of the case when we go there. Is, so. is, there's a chef named Andre Ducassis, uh, and he's got restaurants all over the world. He, uh, he's a three-star or four, uh, Michelin. Uh, do you, is there one in New York? I'm, I'm going to see if there's... Uh, I've never heard of it. Okay, I think he's French. Uh, I think he's I French. ate at the uh, uh, Louis the Fifteenth restaurant in Monaco, uh, and uh, that's uh, Louis the uh, the Cassis's restaurant, and uh, it was it was unbelievable. It was the best meal I've ever had in my life. Really? Yeah, really, yeah. that's good. I'm glad it was the best meal of your life. Uh, uh, I can't tell you what the best meal of my life was because uh, I've had a lot of them in my time. It was also the most expensive. When the bill came, I turned white as a ghost. I think maybe the bill. I was whiter than a Trump supporter. The most memorable <laughs> meal I ever had was we were in, I was in Ibiza, and we were out at a place called uh, Vedra, which is big rock outcropping in the water. And the beach there, Calda Ort, and uh, this was years ago. And they had this little shack which now it's a whole restaurant, but it was a shack then. And uh, they were kind of closed, but the woman was there, and we said, uh, anyway, we can get something to eat. And she said, yeah, she says, I can make you some fish, but i got to warn you, it's a day old. And I Ooh, said, exactly. well, you know, I said, we, a day old, it can't be bad, so th that's fine. So she said, well, it'll take about an hour. And we said, well, so we, we're, we got nowhere to go, and we just hung out. And it was like on this table with a bench built in, you know, one of those kind of deals. And uh, eventually she brought the, uh, the fish, and, it, you know, it had the head. It looked like, uh, you know, a complete fish with the head and the tail. 
and then you had to dig into it and fillet it yourself while you were eating it. We started eating it, and I remember that it was the best fish I've ever had in my life. Wow. To begin with, a day old in Ibiza is really fresh, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and it was, I don't know, she put some kind of marinade on it or something. It was just to die for. And when I was through with it, there was the head and there was the tail and there were just the bones. I looked like Sylvester the cat going down the street, you know, with a trash can taking, getting dinner, you know. Mm -hmm. It was, that was the best meal I've ever had. I mean, the most memorable. Plus, on top of it, uh, this, this wonderful thing called Vedra and this beach of Calda Ort and the Mediterranean and all mm. of that. All these things just, and, and we just come, come down, we just come down from the sentry tower up on the hill. <clears throat> and uh, it was just, it was just to die for. It was just the atmosphere and everything made it the, just the most memorable meal of my life. Is um, where uh, is Huntington, New York, in, on Long Island? Because this the restaurant's at Fifty Five Wall Street. Gee, I'm that... sorry, I wax poetic about that, Phil. Uh, uh, the uh, his restaurant in New York is called Bistro Cassis. I don't give a shit. Anyway, I had the best meal out of some woman who you'll never hear from in your life. <coughs> you know, uh, yeah. and that's the most memorable meal I can remember ever having. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, in Europe, some of the you, you go to the most uh, uh, f restaurants that are in the uh, in the middle of nowhere. Uh, uh, like uh, I, I was in uh, Alsace Lorraine uh, in Strasbourg, and uh, I was in the middle of nowhere. This town had you're a in the middle cow. of nowhere now, Phil. Go ahead. It had a cow. It had a yeah. post office, and it had uh, an auberge. And uh, so we stopped in there for for lunch. And we were the only guests. It was, it was unbelievable. I, I, I we were traveling through Italy. Uh, who was who was I traveling with? I guess my ex-wife. Uh, and we were driving through Italy, and it was going to be nighttime, and we wanted to have something to eat. And so we just asked somebody on the street, "Is there a restaurant nearby?" And they said, "Yeah, down there." And it was like in this town nobody ever heard of. I can't. If I had to go find the town again, I couldn't. Yeah. And there was the restaurant, and it was like this dingy place but I went hey we're hungry let's go in we went into this place you would never know from the outside was what was in, on the inside I mean it had a, a dome ceiling with frescoes on it and everything I mean, it was the most amazing restaurant I've ever been in and then we had the meal and I got to tell you in Italy you can get great meals stopping at a gas station okay yeah. But they, this place was just incredible. And, and, and we said, how would anybody know this was here? You know? Yeah. Uh, because the, but if you look at the outside, you go, I'm not going in there to eat. There are probably rats in there. And then you go in, and it's this, the place was just, it was, it was literally a work of art. Just amazing. Yeah. And the yeah, food was know. incredible. It's it's amazing. Why I don't know why we can't have restaurants like that here in, in the states. Mm -hmm. But uh, do you, do you know that when you're in Italy, you pay one price if you go to have a panini, which is a sandwich. You pay one price if you stand, and you pay another price if you sit at a table. I never had that experience. No, it was it was common I, uh, in Italy. Well, well, maybe you were always sitting because you well, were. Well, I know. I've spent, I've spent my time in Italy, and I've never had that uh, situation. No? Okay. Wait a minute. Somebody is calling us. Michael Klein is calling us. Uh, and, and I guess I can add him to the. Um, let me see here. Uh, Michael Klein. <coughs> let's see here. Uh, let me see. Hey, what, Alex. I, I just got to find out what your name is. Mike. There we go. And uh, I go like that, and I go like that, and there you are. Hello, Michael. How are you? It's a little late to call. We've got a couple yeah, of minutes left. Yeah, I know. Left. I just uh, happened to tune in, and I, I wanted to test out my uh, tech here. Uh-huh. What, what's new about your tech? Let's see. Does this work? What's new about your tech? Yeah, I got two cameras. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me oh. let me let me uh, uh, make a uh, 
Oh, so I, he's, he's switching. I see. Oh, oh, you've got two cameras. Where's that camera? It's way up on the ceiling, right? Up in the corner, and then... Uh, I just wanted to see if this really worked on Skype. Yeah, and what are you using to switch it with? That's Wirecast. Wirecast? Oh, okay. You know, you can, th there is a f free one out there you can use that's, that I use here. Yeah, but mine's free because I cracked it. Oh, you, you what? <laughs> I cracked this software. Oh, you cracked the software. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> Wirecast charges too much money for what it is. You know? I agree. And, and uh, what I use is uh, OBS. Right. Which is... No, that, that's great. But, uh, it's terrific, except tonight it won't switch. So I've got to do it by hand. Yeah, but uh, that's uh, that's cool. That's very cool. Show us that other shot again. Uh, the high shot. Yeah, mm -hmm. the high shot. There we there go. There you go. What's all that's that delay? Uh -huh. A little delay in the video. Yeah, that's cool. That's very cool. Yeah. Nice. We like that. Yeah. And I can I can roll some video here. That is clear. I like that's that it. furniture. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Be quiet, well, Tony. Be quiet, Tony. Michael, Sorry. say something so we go to your camera. Test one, two, three. Yeah, there we go. Now show us that uh, animation. There we go. <laughs> oh, but it's upside. It's backwards. Inside out. Oh, that's probably Skype doing that backwards stuff. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah, because it goes out backwards. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, anyway. But I wanted to see if this worked because it's cool that Wirecast can simulate a webcam to go on Skype. Yeah, yeah, but it looks good. It looks good. And you're having wine, and he's having yeah. coffee, and I'm having my coffee. Because it's because it's Tuesday, I gotta have wine. Yeah, uh, and uh, we're getting close to the end of the show. So, anybody have any final words of wisdom out there? Well, that's a vibrant citizen panel. <laughs> <laughs> we had a lot of people listening tonight, and I, I think huh? maybe uh, we were talking, uh, for some reason, we we're talking about stuff they want to hear. So I don't know. I, I don't get it. I don't I'll know. call back later this week with some good topic. Call, call tomorrow oh. or Friday because Phil isn't going to be calling. You can get a word in edgewise. Yeah, but I kind of like sparring with Phil. You like sparring yeah. with Phil. Well, then call Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> You know, call uh, on Sunday. Yeah, 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 call on yeah, call on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> Never on Sunday. Never on Monday either. You know, well maybe I, I may change my whole schedule and just do Monday only, and then you know. Isn't there something else that goes out on Monday or? Well, I mean, no, I guess no more. It used to be the, uh, the that other show that uh, went on after Jack. Yeah, uh, 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 yeah. There was the. What was the sex show? Yeah, went on 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 Mondays, uh, and they went Monday through Friday, and then they changed it into a non-sex show, and they still kept going Monday through Friday. So Monday they would they would do their show live, yeah, yeah, but long after I gave up doing five a week, you know, and I'm thinking of going down mm -hmm. to maybe three a week. I've, I've been thinking about, it, but then what would I do with my life? Nothing. Nothing. Anyway, let me let me hit the theme here. And get us out of here. Uh, hey, listen. Thank you very much, Tony. Appreciate it. And uh, um, uh, thank you, Kevin. Thank you, uh, Charlie. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Phil. In spite of the fact I beat up on you, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And also, I want to thank uh, uh, Michael Klein for having called. And uh, call us later this week, will you, Michael? Okay? Sure. Okay. That said, if you all wave goodbye, I'll wave back, okay? Here we go. There we are. And there they go. Okay, let me get rid of them here. Let me see here. Uh, uh, kill Skype. Uh, quit Skype. Well, well, I already quit Skype, so <laughs> it's done. Anyway, uh, hey, look, uh, the, uh, the uh, intersection is next with uh, Jack Bishop. And then uh, tomorrow night at uh, 9, at 8.30 is the Franchise MC with the Sports Show. Then there isn't any Damian Chaplin tomorrow night because he's taking his lady out to dinner because it's her birthday. 
And then uh, we'll be here at 10 o'clock tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye, everybody.